it is still sinking in the magnitude of this moment. As soldiers move through these scenes of celebration, they're given a hero's welcome. Liberation feels good, and they are holding on to it tight. Hugely emotional scenes here in the centre of Kherson. The military are driving through, they're playing the national anthem, and people are just running out, uh, tears in their eyes, uh, to express their gratitude for liberating the city, for, for coming in here and bringing it back under Ukrainian control. These people have lived under nine months of terrifying occupation. It's easy to understand why they're weeping tears of relief and joy and clinging on to their liberators. The celebrations carry on across the square all day and it is infectious. Many here feared this time may never come and now they're cherishing it. A rare moment of good news in a war which has caused so much pain. And it is perhaps a reflection of the strength of the residents that life in many places carries on as kind of normal. But the smashed up buildings and the dark secrets they contain are hard to forget. Members of Russia's internal security, the FSB, were based in this hotel before it was hit by a Ukrainian artillery strike. From here, they enforced Moscow's rule of oppression. Those gathering outside say many people in the city were simply disappeared. Surviving under occupation was a life lived in fear. And although freedom is a powerful currency, basic services remain cut. There's no power, and there are queues like this everywhere for water. The Russians spent their time here talking of a new motherland. The posters for the sham referendum still hang heavy over the city. But Vladimir Putin's illegal annexation and his claim, Kherson is Russia forever, means nothing when the people here have a different idea of who they want to be. The truth is, Moscow's forces built nothing and destroyed much. This is the TV tower, which they blew up as they left, cutting telephone services and the internet. You can see the Antonovsky Bridge. It's been continually damaged during this conflict, but those sections there were blown by the Russians when they retreated to the eastern bank. And just a couple of kilometers from where I'm standing, that is their new defensive position. For now, though, it's about reconnecting with the outside world. Soldiers in the square have set up satellite internet so people can tell their loved ones they're OK. It feels like freedom at last. It feels like a big future is coming here. Did you ever think this moment would come? From the very first day, I knew it was coming, sure. The nine months of occupation? Yes, yes. And what was that like? You have to, to have something which you live for, and this was the moment to live for, frankly. I knew liberation is not something happening uh, uh, every year. It's something in five generations, and it's a moment to stay. There is anger here, too, at what Russia has done to Ukraine, with many trying to tear down any reminders of what they've had to endure. And with the Kremlin's forces in retreat, 
People here are willing their military to free the rest of the country soon. Alex Rossi, Sky News, in Kherson City.